would like to welcome you to this October 14th meeting of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regularly scheduled board workshop and all items that will be discussed have been duly po posted. While this is a meeting in the public, it is not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby for audience for guests and follow the instructions on the speaker form. The board's role is to set policy, approve personnel and budget, provide oversight. The management aspect is that of the superintendent. We are not here to handle or solve individual problems. That is the superintendent's job. As a board, we believe we must educate every child, give every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and to provide a safe and secure environment mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. And these are our core values. We thank you for your interest in the students at CISD. So we are going to call this meeting to order. Um, please note, Mr. Chambers is not here tonight, but we do have a quorum. Do we have any audience for guests? Okay. So next is the superintendent's report. All right, thank you. October is National Principals Month, and I would like to thank all of our hardworking campus leaders. They deal with a lot of people on a daily basis that we are probably not even aware of how and what they do each day, but we are very thankful for all of our principals. Um, it's a busy week for extracurricular activities in the district. Our tennis team is in the fall team tennis playoffs for the 40th year in a row, and we are very excited for them. Tomorrow, the t Tigers will face Lake Belton in the regional quarter quarterfinals. The match is set for 9 a.m. Uh, against Lake Belton at Waco Robinson High School. With a win, the team will move on to regional tournament in Melissa on Thursday and pot potentially Friday. Volleyball is at home tomorrow night versus Terrell and on the road at Red Oak on Friday. Our football team plays at Greenville on Friday night at 7 p.m. And also, our Corsicana Tiger Band is performing a UIL competition this weekend. Our band is scheduled to go on at 2 p.m. Saturday at Waco Midway in Hewitt. Admission is free, so we hope that everyone can come out and support our band. We're going to have, we encourage our public to come out for our send-off for the band Saturday morning near the baseball field um, and line 45th Street all the way to Highway 31. The band is scheduled to depart at 10.30 a.m. So we hope everyone can come out and support our CHS band. Good luck to all of our Tigers this week. Next week is Red Ribbon Week, and it kicks off Monday with Re Wear Red Day, <laughs> a pledge to be drug-free. And to see all the themes for the week, visit our website at cisd.org. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Howell. Next on the agenda is discussion action items. First, we have review and approve membership of the School Health Advisory Council. Good evening, Madam President, Ms. Howell, board members. Tonight, I'm presenting the potential members of the School Health Advisory Council. You'll find a list in your board book. Are there any questions? All right. This is a voting item. I move that we approve the, approve the SHAC committee member list as presented. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the SHAC committee membership list as presented. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. That passes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our next item agenda is Colin Scholarship Update from Jared Gordon. I apologize in advance. Uh, we don't have the pretty packet that we always put together. Raymond had gotten me on the calendar. I didn't even think about it. I was thinking about it over the weekend. I needed to prepare these today. Well, the, forgot the bank was closed. And so 
Luckily, I was able to break into the bank and get these printed off for you. But if you'll flip to this first page, this is the basically the asset composition of the Collins Scholarship Fund uh, to give you an idea of where things stand as of September 30th. Uh, you have $604,000 in cash. About 595000 is what we have uh, basically in income cash that's readily available for scholarships. Uh, if you recall, earlier this year, and it really ended up being a good decision, we invested in some short-duration CDs. And so really all together, including the CDs that will mature next summer before the fall uh, scholarship period, you have about $1.2 million in income cash that is available to, uh, to pay out scholarships. So really good position there cash-wise. Uh, looking at the rest of your portfolio, about $9.3 million is in taxable bonds. Uh, which is just shy of 44%, and about 54% of your portfolio is in the stock market. Uh, the vast majority of that's the, in the U.S. equities market, and that's what's really led to the growth over the last few years. Uh, you see that number at the bottom. Uh, as of September 30th, the account is now worth over $21.3 million, and so certainly back well above that $20 million mark. I uh, can tell you, since I've been working on this, you're as good a position as you can imagine. Uh, not only have you had growth, but you're also in a higher interest rate environment. And so we've been able to take advantage of that and generate a lot more uh, dividend and interest income for the fund. Uh, whereas in years past, we were so reliant on the oil and gas income. Now it's kind of flip-flop. Oil and gas income has remained pretty steady this year, but nothing like it was 10 years ago. But dividend and interest income is really strong. Uh, looking at where you're at uh, really quickly, uh, year to date, the portfolio has a 13.32% return uh, versus a benchmark, a composite benchmark of 1244. And so really good position. Uh, stock market's been very strong and so has the bond market. And so we've been able to take advantage of that. And so that's really all I have to add. I mean, you, you're more than welcome to ask questions uh, as you thumb through this. Um, you know, you're well diversified in your portfolio. Uh, growth has certainly been the strong driver uh, in the stock market, and you certainly have your fair share of that as well, while also targeting some of those companies that do pay dividends for the income. And so from an income standpoint, I know we had projected the fund to, but including the oil and gas, to be about $750,000. So when you're looking at what you have available in cash and thinking forward in the future, you're going to have, you're going to be in good position as you'll start to gear up later in the spring for your fall scholarships. Are there any questions? And hopefully you, you all did receive hopefully a uh, fiscal year end statement. Uh, hopefully, did you get one in the mail? Yeah, I'll have to check on that. Brad shaking his head. Brad, did you get it? You thumbed through all of the minerals and <laughs> okay. I'll check on that set. Thank y'all. Thank you, Jared. All right, the next item on our agenda is the Realtor RFQ. All right, thank you, Ms. Howe, Madam President, members of the board. Uh, I'm presenting tonight on behalf of uh, Mr. Kays, who's out of town at a conference today. Uh, we, it was uh, kind of a repeat in reviewing the real estate broker uh, RFQ. Uh, this is an action item. I know Mr. Kays had, had gone and provided some additional information uh, a couple of weeks ago in, in regard to that process uh, just just as a quick review to it uh, and I think you've got this in front of you uh, if I'm if I'm not not wrong uh, there were three submissions uh, all evaluated equally within uh, the rubric that Mr. Case provided um, Century 21 is was was the pick uh, within the rubric uh, that, that he is recommending that the district goes with they've got an extensive resume highlighting commercial real estate businesses, small and large, both in Corsicana and the DFW area. Um, 
Submissions were all scored on their ability to meet or exceed the requirements in the RFQ, experience, qualifications, local uh, and school district real estate knowledge, cost, uh, and fee structure, and completeness of the response to the RFQ. Uh, Century 21 does have a max uh, rate of 2.5% and a floating rate that decreases uh, once, once a uh, sale exceeds a million dollars as well. Uh, the scores are on the back. Uh, Mr. Kays is requesting board approval of the, of the RFQ and recommending Century 21, if there aren't any more questions. Does anyone have any questions? We've had time to review the information from our last meeting. I move that we approve Century 21, Mike Bowman, Incorporated, CI, Mr. Rose Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve Century 21, Mike Bowman, Incorporated, SCSD Real Estate Broker. All in favor? Uh, any opposed? All right, that passes. Thank, thank, thank you. Very much. you. All right, we are now going to move into closed session as permitted by Texas Government Code Section 551.01.